Hello. Nothing beside me. I have no Keith. I am Keithless tonight. He is poorly bad in bed with a shawl on and both feet in one sock, waiting for the doctor to come and rub his chest with Vic. But Vic called around this afternoon and she says there's no bloody way, there's too many hairs and she's just not getting involved because he's a grumpy old bastard doing nothing but reading the paper and swearing. So there, now you know, Keith's not here. However, however, there are two other people that are here, one of whom is Matt Gerrish, who is now live on screen. Hello, Matt Gerrish, how are you? Hello, I'm fine. How are you, sir? I'm very, very well, thank you, darling. And the one. other, the other, don't say anything other person yet, is the one and only bountiful butte deliciousness and well the babe that is sav hello sav hello there you are it's back on screen it's lovely to have you back kiddo thank you it's lovely to be back excellent here so there you go now it's going to be it's going to be quite short tonight a bit of hoots toots and there's a moose loose about hoose and all kinds of stuff like that because as you may or may not be aware I went off up to the land of the sweaty socks as some people call it or the land of the outrageous haggis uh, over the weekend to the Glasgow School of Vape number three and I have video from there some of which is is possibly a little bit comedic towards the end that'll be the first one that gets played in after the news and one that's a bit more serious and shows you what was going on up there so and there's a couple of reviews as well one's good one's not so good but i'm not going to tell you which one's which until we get there but first but first but first but first but first the news there are days in my life that i've really looked forward to yesterday was one of them when a new piece of literature was published from the ncsct oh look let me just show you it and here it is. It's a briefing for stop smoking services. And one of the first things to note, look at the illustration. Box mod, decent tank on top. And this gives you some idea of where it's all going to go. But one thing I want you to note before we go any further is two names under that bit where it says reviewers. You will see Sarah Jakes and Laurie and Jolly. Two members of the new Nicotine Alliance who were asked to review this document alongside Lynn Dawkins, Jamie Brown, Peter Hayek, Elspeth Henderson, Wayne Hall, uh, Joanne Locker, Louise Ross and Robert West. This is an official document and let's just scroll through it all and pick out some of the bits that you need to look at. The link will go in. Um, Go and have a look at it and, and give it to everybody that ever argues. Um, but even in the introduction, it says right at the top of the page there, we begin by acknowledging that e-cigarettes are considerably safer than smoking cigarettes, are popular with smokers and that they have a role to play in reducing smoking rates. The briefing doesn't focus on the use of e-cigarettes in the general population for managing temporary abstinence, nor as part of an attempt to reduce the amount of cigarettes being smoked. Um, and so on and so on and so on and so forth and there's lots and lots of information for instance is nicotine dangerous no does not cause smoking related disease such as cancers and heart disease these are caused by other chemicals found in tobacco smoke nicotine is addictive however and it is why people continue to smoke despite knowing about harmful effects of tobacco nicotine in e-cigarettes poses little danger to adult users in order to prevent accidental poisoning of children, e-cigarettes and liquids should be stored away safely, just as you would with household cleaning products and medicines, including NRT products. And this, it just goes on, it goes on. Look, quote from Louise Ross, every time I see someone vaping, I think that's another person not smoking a cigarette. It goes into the generations, it goes into loads and loads of stuff. Um, personal choice how often should i use my e-cigarette to help me so on and so forth lots and lots and lots of data there lots and lots of advice and here's how to be e-cig friendly for stop smoking services don't be anxious about not being an expert it's unlikely that you'll know or be expected to know everything about e-cigarettes but what you do know 
is how to help people stop smoking. It may be that your service users will use NRT along with e-cigarettes. That can increase the likelihood of successful quitting. Um, be positive when speaking about e-cigarettes. When you say, we can't recommend e-cigs, people hear, e-cigarettes are no good. Instead, they're being advised to choose words that convey a positive message such as, while we can't supply them, but we can certainly offer the extra support that will help you stop smoking if you buy your own e-cigarette, and so on and so forth. And here's the bit, don't be alarmed about recreational nicotine. This is a choice some people make and it is not the business of stop smoking services to make judgments about this. We are not a stop nicotine service, and if we think getting people off their e-cigarette is a good use of our time, we're ignoring a far more important opportunity to help people quit and to stay off cigarettes. Be open to their choices and listen to them, especially when they say that they're doing really well with their e-cigarette. Also, look forward to hearing people celebrate their success and telling you that using an e-cigarette and receiving support was a revelation. It's quite important. It's a very, very important document. Taking, taking that alongside the PHE report from August last year, what we have here is literature that says, look, e-cigs are a damned good thing. That's what it says. I would encourage you really uh, to get a copy of the PDF. It's, it's there, it's public, it's there for everybody to have. And just share it widely. If you come across an e-cig denialist, and Lord knows there are plenty of them, Keep on putting it under their faces until they've read it and understood it. This, again, is a result of the good work that's being done by advocates in the UK and all over the place, actually. And I'm very, very proud to be associated with both Sarah and Lorian, who have had massive input to this, as has the NNA generally. So there you go. That's a good piece of news for today. Back to the studio. Yes, back to the studio. I recorded that little bit earlier on today while I was in the mood to sit down and actually record it. Now, I know because Matt's been at work. He does. I'm sorry to swear like that, but he's been at work for the last couple of days. So I'm, I'm fairly sure with Matt that uh, you won't have seen that, will you? As, as of yet, that is. <clears throat> I, I had a quick skim for it. You, uh, you provided me with the link uh, not so long ago uh -huh. and for oh, this is good stuff. And... That's basically the messages I gained from it and uh, something I will read a bit more later on. It, it came so many of the myths, it's ridiculous. What about you, Sav? Have you had a chance to have much of a look through it? I had a brief look this afternoon at it um, and from what I saw, fabulous job, well done, NNA. And, I mean, the comments from chat, again, they've all said the same thing. Now that's a thing of beauty, great document there, reads like it was written by a vapor, really good stuff. There's a reason for that. <laughs> I thought that might be. <laughs> Fantastic document, puts down a lot of ASIC noise, and this document is really rather awesome. This is what chat I've got to say about it. It is a bit, yes. It's um, it's the kind of thing that, that, that we've been agitating to get for a donkey's age. Um, we need to, we've, we've been needing this for a long time. And advocates, NNA and others, um, have been talking to as many people as they possibly could to try and persuade them of the, the merits, if you like, of, of coming out with documentation like this. Um, I, I can't actually go into massive details about where all of the impetus comes from and how it all works. Suffice it to say that there are advocacy groups that are working really hard with people with influence behind the scenes. And I know a lot of people are saying, well, what's such and such a group doing? What's such and such a group doing? What are they doing? Why do they want money? This is what happens when those groups do what they do. Um, I'm trying to be circumspect here. I'm trying to, I'm trying to kind of, what's the word I'm looking for? I'm, I'm trying to be, read between the lines. You know what, you cannot, I cannot explain exactly what goes on, because that might give a bit of the game away, but let's just say that there's a lot of people being very busy behind the scenes, and the result of all that is documentation like this, and, and I think it's absolutely fabulous, and kudos, lots of kudos to Sarah and Lorian, because they've been heavily involved with this, uh, this whole piece of uh, 
documentation that's going to hit the literature that's going to get everywhere as i said in the news piece for god's sake get the pdf it's been tweeted all over the place anyway the link will go in i'm sure iridian's got it um get the pdf get it in front of everybody and if you've got a stop smoking service local to you that's being a set of ass hats create multiple copies of the pdf print it out take it down and make them sit down and read it with a cup of coffee and, and until they understand it don't leave them keep smacking them going read it more you little buggers see what it says this is what you're supposed to do that's what you need just we need to get it there what do you think sav couldn't agree more i mean that document needs to be in front of every stop smoking service that is being problematic shall we say because I mean, it's, it's, it's not like you to be quite so genteel about it. I'm trying to be good with being my first show back. <laughs> <laughs> so I'll start gently. But no, they need to see that. It's all common sense. It's all really good stuff. It needs to be out there. People need to see it. Yes, yes, exactly right. Now, I'm seeing chat in chat that Glance is going to be suing Hollywood. <laughs> I, 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 I'm sorry, I feel the need to piss myself laughing um, because if he does, he's going to lose and I'm going to go into a fit of the giggles so here's some video I shot on the way to Glasgow We're, uh, we're off We is heading towards Glasgow Hello Jake yeah, off we go to Glasgow. Apparently this couldn't be tweeted, I don't know why. Just said there was an error. Never mind. I assume some people know. So yes, I'm burglarising off to uh, to Glasgow, even as we speak. Driving on the road again. Reed, um, I'm going to pull this one down for the moment and I'll try and catch up with you all later on. Expect some periscopes and maybe even some live YouTubiness from the Glasgow. And finishes 12 hours later, apparently. Whether I shall see the 12 hours later or not, I don't know, because the beer is rather good in the Dreary Bar and Grill, as I recall. I sampled some of it last time. I'm going to be sampling more of it this. Ha ha! That's why I'm going up the night. So there you go. Right. Uh, that's David Dawn. News on VTTV. In the car. On the way to Glasgow. See you later. Take care, buddy. Bye bye. Now life. Live, live, this is live. Hello, buddy lad. Um, yes, this is it. We're now out of the front of the car. It's Dave here. Um, on the way to Glasgow, as ever was. Hello, Swifty McTavish. Um, so, yes, we're, we're, we're hurtling off towards uh, the land of the cultivated haggis, as you might say. Um, and this is the view I've got in Northumberland on the A69. Empty road, sweeping vistas. Let's uh, get past this little lot. Don't know how long I'll have this. This is gorgeous. I mean, this is what we're looking at now. And uh, yes, on the way to the land, of the cultivated hacks. Hello, it's Dave again here at the Glasgow School of Vape. Listen! What you are hearing are the fire alarms. The fire alarms are going off and you can see everybody's panicked. Watch. There you are. This is everybody panicking. Notice everybody running for the doors. Not. Yes, we are here in the Drury Bar and Grill on Drury Street. Drury Street, Drury Street in Glasgow. Fire alarms are giving it hot licks. The lads have just gone off to turn the panels off. Thank goodness for that because the noise is ridiculous. Um, and yeah, we have no idea why any fire alarms might have gone off. Not the slightest notion. Why would that be the case? Look! Yay! 
Now, interestingly, interestingly, oh, there's a shadow on my face. There you go. Interestingly, I have just seen Marissa de Andrade is here. So there's people from academia. There's all kinds of folks here. It's going to be fabulous. There's a survey to fill out. Fire alarms are now reset and should not go off again. Like I say, we've no idea, no idea how they could possibly have gone off. Not even the slightest. Why would that be the case? You have any clue? No, no idea at all. Not a clue. Probably a toilet door or something. I don't know. Could well be. Thank you. There's Andy Morrison. Hello. Hello. And Paddy. Hello. Again. Uh, ladies and gentlemen, to just uh, make people aware, you know, the only place you can't bathe them here evidently is the toilet because it's on a different alarm system. Uh, the alarm system and the toilet both set off. Please do not bathe in the toilets. Can you hear that? Don't bathe in the toilets. Yeah, well, the only system will set it off. We're going to set a fan up just to say is. So, ladies and gentlemen, if you raffle being run shortly, so that that that's the rules. No vooping, no vooping. You can't poop and vape at the same time. Outside of that, it's fine. We'll catch up with you later on. Take care. Bye bye. So we're here in Glasgow. This is 24-hour news box. But look, just look at the central station. Look, this is outside the central station. Just look what they've got in the window. Can you see? Subbox Nano Starter Kit, Future Technology, whatever from here, and I'm pissed anyway. NV22, there's the Spark, look at all the juices, Charlie's Chalk Dust, all of this kind of tea stuff. Juice. Tea juice, look, 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 look there. Smock, VTC, there's, oh, there's all kinds, look at did it. Did you get the Subbox Nano in there? I did, I did, I did, I did, look at it. Look at that there, look. Brilliant stuff. Elegant stuff. I mean, there's just barrel loads. And for those of you of a more... No, don't go there. Yeah, no, no. that's the gear. There you go. So there we are. Crack, I have eh? Periscope open. And I have Paddy Costell in front of me. So, come on then, Paddy. What do you make of today? What an incredible day. What a wonderful day with a lot of acres that I never, ever thought would happen. I love this. It was the most entertaining and engaging day I've had in a very long time. And I'm so glad I came up here. I'm so glad I came to Glasgow and I hope that a number of you will consider coming next time. What do you make of uh, all of the, the non-vapers, the externals that Andy got along? It was an impressive lineup. Um, actually getting people who had an interest in it, had a, a concern about it, was it was it, it, it was just, it, it was just something I never expected to happen. I think that we we've made an impact in Glasgow. We had nearly 200 people, over 200 people, as far as I can um, gather from the organisers, and probably 20 or 30 of those were people who had no interest or apparent interest in vaping. Yes, I think that's uh, that's been one of the most uh, wonderful. It, it, it's just utterly amazing when you consider that there was people there from Stop Smoking Services. There was, oh and I've forgotten her name, with the survey. Well, let's just put it like this, it's an academic Right, survey about people's attitudes towards vaping, not just from vapors, from all, all over. Um, he responses, and without it being announced, that was the bit that got to me. Nobody announced it, she just got on with the survey, and people have been sitting down, ticking boxes, doing this survey, over 80 responses, and more to come. That's, that's fantastic. And then academics, the likes of Marissa de Andrade, Indeed. From Stirling? Yes. Um, there. Uh, as I said, Stop Smoking Services. Uh, Christopher Russell. Indeed. Um, yes. uh, of Nicotine Surveys. He's been there. Um, even Cancer Research UK. 
Now, I'll, I'll show you Paddy's face when I say this rather than mine. Science Research UK had heard all kinds about e cigs, so they decided they would try them. You could see him free. <laughs> the pair of them stood there. Um, <laughs> that must have been when I was watching football. Well, it, it, it might well have been, I don't know. Um, but yes, yes. I'm not going to name them just in case they shouldn't have been doing it. But they decided to think they was actually try it and see what it was we were all on about. If, if you can imagine in excess of 100 people, because the, this 180 to 200 people that have been there has been through the course of the day, but at the time, in excess of 400 people in the place, Vape and Lake Mag, so they thought, well, we better try it. So they did. And both said, oh, I can see how you could get into this, which is interesting. And, and talking to the pair of them as well, uh, this has not come from a, the perspective of can we go and get ammunition to bury this lot. That was definitely not on the cards. Probably one of the most interesting days I've spent. Admittedly, it, it was nine hours and I, I spent three hours of it out watching football, but then that's what I do. And, <laughs> But the rest of the time, I, I didn't think I could actually stay there for that long in, in that kind of environment. And there was an awful lot of people from NNA who said, there's no way you're going to be able to put up with that. And I did. And I'm so proud of myself for doing that. And I'm so proud of all the vapors for raising so much money for the charity. And I'm so happy that I came up here. But and I will do it again. But then again, that's because it's Glasgow and I love Glasgow anyway. But it's a place I would encourage anybody to come to. It's one of the most vibrant gatherings I've been to in a long time. And I've been to a few vape meets. Admittedly, I haven't been to that many, but this was possibly one of the most exciting things I've been to. And the guys who organize it were the most amazing people. I think Colin, who is the organiser, deserves a huge amount of credit. Oh, God, yes, without a doubt. And there were a number of other people there who put an awful lot of effort into it, and I'd encourage anybody who is in the area to come along to the next one, and I know it's going to be in the not too distant future. Yes, not good enough. And I'll just echo what Paddy's just said. I mean, bottom line on this is... Glasgow School of Vape is proving itself to be the event that everybody needs to go to if they're within reach of it. Yes, along with GFN. <laughs> um, the welcome that you find up here in Glasgow is second to none. Even beats Mackham's, and I'm a Mackham, so there. Don't believe everything you hear about Scotsmen being tight because they're far from it. The welcome that we've had and the hospitality that we've had has been absolutely amazing. And, and here's the thing, right? We did a little bit of an auction uh, to raise a few few quid for NNA and, and, and look, look, there are 451 of Her Majesty's Golden Beer tokens in that little lot. Sold a few wristbands, did the auction. The auction I, was fabulous. There may be some footage of that available on VTTV, um, but it actually worked as an auction, which was really good. 451 quid raised. Um, that's a lot of money. And that's going to be put to some really good use as well by the NNA, I am here to tell you. Um, just a fabulous time, all told. An absolutely amazing time. And as Paddy says, if you are within the environs, and as far as I'm concerned, that means less than 180 miles away, because that's how far I drove, um, you need to drag your ass to the next one. GSOV4. Keep your eyeballs peeled. There is a Facebook page for the, uh, the Glasgow School of Vape. Um, join it, get some do like everybody said they would do that's been to GSOV today, go to nnalliance.org, get signed up and go for it. Um, so from me, and I'm going to put the camera back on Paddy because I'm ugly enough. It's good night from him. And it's good night from him, from both of us up here in Glasgow. JD buys and uh, we'll see you on the flip side. Take care. Bye bye. Yes, yes, NNA, New Nicotine Alliance, promoting and supporting tobacco harm reduction. Now, there's, wait, that's that camera there. Yes, now, you might have noticed 
that one of us in the back end of that was definitely tiddly push. Might have had a drink or two. The other one might have had more. Um, there's going to be more, shall we say, sober fo footage uh, towards the end of the show or later in the show. Uh, it'll be all good. And you'll, you'll be able to see the sterling work that was done um, by both Colin, who is the owner of one of the most outstanding waistcoats you have ever seen um, and a set of chops that go along with it. I mean, it's just superb. And Andy Morrison, who managed to attract people there, people I refer to as the externals. How he did it, I don't know. Somebody in chat said he must be Darren Brown. He's four foot taller than Darren Brown, but he's obviously got the same kind of, uh, the same kind of ability. So yes, um, and, and yes, GS or V4, you definitely, definitely do need to be there. Now, again, a little bit later in the show, I'm going to show you a piece of kit that I bought up there, which may not be massively brilliant, shall we say. But in the meantime, you know we like to do stuff for beginners, because we do like to do stuff be for beginners. Don't we, Sav? Yes, we do. And this is probably for neither. But never mind. You'll enjoy it. Any test, let's start a kit. Um, have a look, see what you make of it. Hi and welcome to Solo. Today we're going to be looking at the Tesla Invader 3 kit. Comes with this RDA. Okay, this is the box the uh, kit comes in. As you can see, you've got a picture of the mod there. Tesla Invader 3 there. Okay, on the sides. Underneath you have the information regarding what's in the box. You've got your scratch and check. Barrel there. A couple of uh, screws and two Clapton coils. Hopefully you can see that all right. And then underneath there you've got a bit of Cotton, lovely. Okay, just put that to one side. Underneath the other tray, you have your device. Here's the device itself, just take that out. Underneath there, you have a very interesting and good user manual. Tells you all about the information that you need to know of how to use your device. Really good. Really nice. Okay, let's have a look at the device itself. Here we go. This is the Tesla Invader 3. And I really do like this one, must admit. Okay, it is measuring uh, from here to here 90.5. And there's your pedometer there, which is obviously your dial for increasing or decreasing your cut off reverse battery uh, protection low voltage protection atomized short positive and negative there all this is nicely sealed in really nice has two magnets uh, one there and one there for your door I don't know if you can just see that it says invader there three Really do like this, really nice in the hand and slap shuts really nicely. To move the dial, you can either use a uh, screwdriver or actually a nice, really nice in the hand. It's not a, uh, a, a big uh, device, but you see, it has got some weight to it as well, so really nice. Okay, let's have a quick look at the uh, RDA. From here to here, not including the 510, it's 40 millimeters. So let's just take this apart. Really, these uh, O-rings quite tight. Just put that aside. And you have a Pyrex. If we can get this off, <laughs> that is really tight. You've got your Pyrex uh, tube, and you also have a stainless steel one as well. And it obviously has Tesla Clapton RDA on there. 
hopefully you can see that. The drip tip is quite interesting drip tip. I've been using without it to be honest with you. So it just, just unscrews off. And there's spit back protection. And that's your mouthpiece. Quite a wide bore there. Okay, just put that one side and the two barrels and this is your deck you can see that to uh, the freak show or the uh, Kennedy in style it's bottom airflow and these airflow slots are eight millimeters by three millimeters it's post four post design as you can see there. And I've got some uh, twisted 24 gauge uh, coils in there and obviously the airflow comes up from the uh, bottom there so it goes from there and up onto your coils the uh, post holes are 2 mil uh, in uh, diameter so they're not the biggest of post holes okay so to simply put it together like any normal Obviously, they just click on together and screw onto your device, and that's what it looks like. And obviously, if you're wanting to have the uh, stainless steel barrel, just take this off. What it looks like with the uh, stainless steel barrel. Okay, so that was the up and close of the Invader 3 kit. So, what do I think to it? Well, we'll talk about the Clapton RDA first. Aesthetically, really do like it. I think it looks really cool with the uh, glass. Really do like it. Love the uh, bottom airflow. Um, comes in right at the bottom and comes up from uh, to your coils. Really do like it. The deck itself, really easy to build on. Um, the only issues I've had is the actual screws nipping the uh, wire. But I had to take the screws off and just uh, sand them at the bottom. And ever since then, they've been fine. What's the flavour like? The flavour is very nice, it really is. It's quite flavoursome, even though you've got this massive big blooming uh, mouthpiece. It is very flavoursome. I have took the uh, spit back uh, protection off and I'm really enjoying it. What are the downsides? Well, to be honest with you, there's not many downsides, but the downsides that um, I can think of. One, you can't change uh, the drip tip at all, so you've, you are fixed with, with this uh, metal piece. Uh, I don't like metal, so it's a little bit of a niggle, that one. And also the size, because it's 24 uh, millimeters in diameter, it's not going to fit on um, a lot of met tube mech mods and things like that. I've found that it fits on my rig uh, mech mod all right. But besides that, it's a nice little RDA. So what do I think to the box? I really do like this box, I must admit. It's really comfy in the hand, and I do love the protection that it's got. Uh, it's got uh, 10 second cutoff, reverse battery protection, low voltage protection, atomized short circuit protection, device heat protection, and overcurrent protection. So there's a lot going off uh, in this little uh, box. Uh, the downsides to it, obviously it doesn't have any screens and it's more of a dial to taste. So you put in your dial and you just twist it a little bit until you find the uh, desired flavour and heat that you want. Like I said, it goes from a 3.7 to 6 volts and it's 240 watts, obviously depend upon the uh, uh, build that you've got in there. Really do like it, uh, must admit. One thing I did forget about is that on the side here, you've got actually a light that obviously tells you this information. So I'll just show you that. You've got five clicks on, five clicks off. So five clicks on, 
I mean, obviously, every time that you uh, fire it, it clicks. But because it's at an angle here, when obviously in the dark, um, or you've got low light, you don't want uh, the light blinding you. So obviously, because it's at that angle, it doesn't fire up in your face. Really do like it, I must admit. The uh, back panel for your door, really easy. Just a couple of magnets there obviously uh, that side and they fit on really nice and snug no movement at all really is nice do like the kit so overall i think it's a great little kit um i'm really happy about it i really am it is a lovely kit and yeah it's not bad at all. I, I do like it. And I've been actually using this now for a two weeks solid. And yeah, I'm very, very happy with it. Okie dokie. So that was the Tesla Invader 3 kit. Thank you very much for watching. Do really appreciate it. And as always, happy vaping. There you go. That was Mark Crew so long. Um, with the Tesla Mark III kit, I just, I have to say, I do like the idea very much of the spit pack, spit, try that one again, the spit back protection. There we go. Um, where were we? Yes. I was watching that, as we do, we watched it earlier on, and, and, and I'm going to bring Sav in uh, on this one, because Sav and I, we're queer folks, aren't we Sav? We are indeed. And I mean that in the very nicest possible way that we're queer folks. Um, we worry about batteries. And there's been an awful lot of shite about batteries in the press lately. Has there not, Sav? There has been an awful lot. People and, blowing their legs up and things. Yes, blowing their legs up. And the reason yeah. behind that is because they've been shoving batteries in their pockets without spit back protection. <laughs> Or any other form of protection, condoms or anything else come to that. What do you make of it, Sav? Well, it's stupid. <laughs> <laughs> Quite frankly. But what do you really make of it? It's really stupid. Oh, there we go. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I was taught as a kid, as a little small person, that you don't put batteries in your pockets because you have keys in there, you have coins in there, and you blow your leg up. Yes. I thought that was common knowledge. You would have thought so, wouldn't you? Apparently not. Well, I've been thinking about this, and I reckon, I reckon, that there's a way around it all. Now, let's, I'm going to not do that thing there, and I'm going to do that thing there. Right. That camera, no, that camera. Now, the fact that we use 18650s and 26650s, is kind of a historical throwback, if you want to call it that. Shout out any time you like, Sav. I know I haven't got you on screen, but... The reason we did that was because we could get them. And the reason that we got them, and bear in mind I'm going back now probably about six years, maybe even longer, was because somebody discovered that when you pulled a battery pack out of a defunct laptop, it was filled with what we now know as 18650s. And I have one here and i've got this one specifically for a reason let's go to camera foe there you are 650 this is the kind of 18650 which after i was talking to torchy up in glasgow you should never buy and he will never sell you he no longer flogs them and the reason that he no longer flogs efest is because you have got no bloody idea what is in the wrapper it could be an LG one week, it could be a Sony another week, and it could be the sweepings off a factory floor another week. You've just got no idea. There is no chance of being able to match two of them up if they're from different batches. You've just got no clue. But we've used 18650s traditionally because they do bang an awful lot of power out and we need an awful lot of power for what we do. The problem is, as you can see, it's very easy to shove that in a pocket and get your coins mating a circuit between the two, at which point you get... You set your leg on fire. Well, you get a slightly warm leg, then you get a toasted leg, uh, a medium rare leg, possibly even a well-done leg. 
and look look at the state of this one you can see the wrapper is already starting to drop to bits i mean do you remember this just come to me ages well, it didn't come to me ages ago came to me just now uh -huh. about something that happened ages ago and it was um yeah i can't remember his name the guy trog trog years and years and years ago when he first started with a screwdriver he did that he set a battery on fire in his pocket and mm -hmm. that's why he was so on about batteries all the time because of how easy it is to do it if you don't know any better and it's sad how many people it's scary how many people don't know any better well it's true and and, and the thing about it is is people people think batteries are safe mm -hmm. no and and people think batteries are batteries now Outside of the argument about whether it's a cell or whether it's a battery, and a battery is a collection of cells, but let everybody calls them batteries, so let's stick with that. If you buy a cell phone that has replaceable batteries, then the batteries that go in a cell phone come in a package. They don't generally speak and come as an 18500 or a, a 14500 or a, an 18650 or whatever. It usually comes as a little flat pack it's got contacts on it, it fits in, and you can only charge it either in the phone or with the charger they provide, because that's the only charger that'll fit. If you buy a camera that takes lithium ion batteries, like a Canon camera, the Canon fit is specific to Canon. That means you've got to use Canon's charger, you can't even charge it in the, in the, in the, in the camera, you charge it in the Canon charger and it's got all of the stuff that's there to make sure everything's going to be all right and it isn't a problem. It seems to be only when we get to ASIGs that we're stuck with, and let's pull a selection of batteries out, clatter, clatter, bang, and here's, here's a fair few, right? These are all E-Fests, and I'm, I'm using all E-Fests because they're all going to get hoid. I'm going to bring nails through some of them and see if I can make them blow up just to prove what's going on. We only use these for historical reasons we don't use them for any reason other than historical so here is what i would like to propose recently dave kitson matt gurish and myself have bought dji osmos and these are the batteries for dji osmos now if i pull in a 26 650 and put them side by side you can see that height wise there's not a lot of difference diameter wise there's not a lot of difference um, but power wise there's a fair amount of difference and in safety terms there's a massive amount of difference look look at those contacts at the top and if I turn it you will see I shall rake in my pocket please do not try this at home just in case it all goes horribly wrong I can put a 50 pence on there straight across the terminals it ain't gonna go bang why isn't it gonna go bang because those terminals if i can get them in focus are recessed as you can see you can see the recess there look in that side on view they are so far recessed that's going to be perfectly safe but by the same token when you buy these things and i don't know whether matt can confirm this because i don't know what what his live ship with but mine had a little protector on Yes. Yeah, I had my Canon battery that I just got the other day came wrapped in a protector as well. I've got I've got uh, Canon batteries, and uh, and and the way they work, they've all got a little yellow plastic thing that fits over the everything, so that it it just you can't short it out. When you've got that protector on, it won't short out. Now, let's just move the the Osmo battery to one side for a second, and go to camera four. And I want to show you this. And this is a message to vendors. These cases will cost a vendor probably five to 10 pence each. And they will take, in this case, two 18650s separated so they can't touch each other and they can't get terminal to terminal. It's plastic, so look, that's it. You can put two 18650s in there, shove it in your pocket, and your leg is not going to end up looking like Sunday's roast. You can do that. Every 26, 650, 18, 650, 18, 500, 14, 500, and bugger if I can remember what those tiny ones that are totally useless are called. But 10, 
Ten 440s. Thanks, Sav. Ten 440s. Bloody hell. We used to <coughs> use, we used to use them and all. I, I could get four hours at one of them. You weren't really trying, Sav. No, that's true. You weren't. But yes, look, there you go. Vendors, please, no matter what else you do, I really don't care. Just never, ever sell a battery without a case. Whether it's single or two, never sell a battery without a case. You'll see in footage coming up later on, Torchy was up in Glasgow. I saw him move I don't know how many batteries and even singles went with a case. This shouldn't be a case of people needing to pay for them. They should just be provided. If you do that, and if you educate everybody, and when you hand the batteries across, you say, please do not take your batteries out of the charger unless they either go into this case or your mod. Bottom line on it. If every vendor, every time, says that, then we'll see a lot less of this fuckwittery going on. And I use the term advisedly. People do not know, and you can't expect them to know. They are consumers. Ask any consumer what the resistance is of the incandescent light bulb they've got in their front room or their kitchen, and they will not be able to tell you. They don't know, and they don't need to know. They just know what wattage it is. And the same applies to batteries. Now, in truth, what I would much prefer to see is this setup here, where we have a specific charger for the specific battery that would work with a specific mod. This is a high power one. This is an 11.1 .1 volt battery. It's lithium ion, lithium, oh, come on, David. Lithium ion polymer. It's rechargeable. It's got all of the protection that you would want. It can only be charged in that specific charger. And that, we've never heard of any of these blowing up yet. No doubt somebody will make it happen, but I would love to think that the manufacturers of e-cigs would claim on board with this and come up with battery packs like that. Now, it may well be they're going to be a little bit more expensive than the cheap knockoff, counterfeit and substandard 18650s that can be bought all over the place. But quite frankly, given the length of time you're going to get out of a good battery, and this one will last me at least three years, if you're going to get that, it's worth paying a few, Bob, and if you only ever need four, if they could even standardize on this kind of packaging, for instance, if you're only ever gonna need four or five, that's cheap for your safety. So there you go. That's me rant over. Have you anything to add, Sav? No, I couldn't agree more. I mean, you know what I'm like with batteries and I can't be trusted with 8650s, so I won't have them because I won't trust myself with them because I'm terrible. And that, I mean, I have my mother's daughter, they ended up all over the place, so. She she had she did have one on charge for two years. It's true. I think it's still on charge now. <laughs> but so no, I think exactly what you said. If best advice any vendor can give is exactly what you said. If they're not on charge, they should either be in the mod or in a protective box. Exactly right, Matt. You got anything to add? Oh, uh, I do. Um the uh, the guys from evolve were onto something i think when they released the dna 200 now what else am i think about the dna 200 that's been documented eventually um they were onto something by specifying that only you know uh, lithium polymer back, uh, packs can be used uh -huh. they eventually relented and 18650s are able to be used as well yes but that would ensure that basically the mods would come with non rechargeables and hopefully decently specced batteries. Much like going back to the Osmo you got there. Now, the reason that they're a bit pricier is because they are designed for the task they are intended for. Yes. And they also have other features like uh, self-discharging ability when after a certain amount of days they haven't been used. So that therefore prolongs the life. Yes. So I'd like to see more of that coming into e-cigs as opposed to simply the crude method of putting a battery in and powering a coil. Yes. And I, I mean... Yes, people are saying in chat that um, mobile phone batteries blow up and stuff. Yeah, nothing's perfect. Batteries are batteries, and yeah. things can go wrong, but... Yeah, but ultimately, bang. they are volatile chemicals. Yeah, exactly. Mm. And when they go bang, they go bang quite spectacularly, and you really don't want to be 
in their way when they do. So don't put them in your pocket. <clears throat> exactly right. Exactly right. That's exactly what you don't want to do. Let's draw a line under that um, because I think we've we've had our say, and and I would I would love to hear what everybody else has got to say. So you know, join us on Twitter, join us on the forums, get onto the Facebook page, and and all of that kind of stuff. And you know, um, lobby, lobby manufacturers, lobby people that need lobbying, and you can also let the NNA. Have you heard of the NNA, the New Nicotine Alliance? They're very good. Let them know how you feel because they might lobby on your behalf as well. I'm saying they might lobby. We might lobby because, yes, I'm a trustee and we will. But we need to know how people feel. How would you feel about bespoke battery packs for ACs to make them safer for everybody and to stop things that, you know, newspapers like the Mail and whatever carrying horror stories about people losing their legs and, you know, Anyway, right, look, you might have noticed uh, from earlier on in the show that I was up in Scotland and I'm kind of segueing into this from the whole battery thing. Torchy was there and the NNA stand, the new Nicotine Alliance stand, was right beside where Torchy was. It was a fabulous, fabulous, fabulous day. No, I'm good for a vitamin drink. No, I'm good. <laughs> no, 
off. Um, I worked with these guys and I've never seen the Glasgow shot, so. Very good, very good day, very good. I met you again, so. I am, yes. I'll have one or two. I have a And a burger, and a burger. And a burger. Yes. 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 I, I am. My knuckles are getting dry, don't oh, you know? I'll see you later then, Rip Jake, yeah, man. See you in a while, man. David Dom, you know Katina. Oh, I know that face. You do indeed. How are you? Good, how are you? I'm very well. I'm very well. You're on camera, so don't sweat. So what do you make of what you've seen so far? <laughs> oh, come on, it's good, it's good, it's an eye opener. Certainly that you've been here since the start of the I have, yes. So what, what how, how many people have you spoken to? What have you said? Um I've spoken to a few people. Um more so the I suppose the people that are working in the the shops, um, yeah, just to find the information about for myself, really. I've just arrived, so I've not done anything yet, but I'm going to be here for the next couple of hours. You haven't passed out yet with the vape? No. <laughs> so come on then, Larissa, what are you looking to find out? How do you mean, what am I looking to find what out? What are you to find out? What are you going to get out of today? Have you ever had to speak to people? Okay, that's good. You haven't visited the NNS yet? No, I've just walked in. Okay, fine. Well, we'll see you later. Sure. Excellent stuff. This is all. You will, you will note, you can probably hear, the fire alarms are given at 6 nothing. You'll also note, nobody's moving. Nobody cares. This is a proper vape meet. Yes!
exposed to conspiracy that the big tobacco and pharmaceutical companies have been trying to stop vaping. Uh, they have been putting out negative media uh, across different countries. They have been uh, funding and lobbying millions of dollars, uh, especially the American government. Now, I've got that in my campaign at the moment to get a billion lives to Premier, Premier at the Edinburgh International Film Festival. That was a fabulous day. And seriously, you can get to the next one, get there. It was amazing. Now, a couple of comments came in from chat saying that the CRUK girls looked uncomfortable. Those two CRUK girls were vaping. <laughs> they were vaping. Zero nick and three milligram. They even tried mine. And I'm here to tell you, and this is what surprised everybody. This is gonna surprise Sav one of the girls took this and she said right i'll have a go what do i do i said you just just press the button and this dear viewer is what happened she went okay oh that's nice i can get used to that good anna that's exactly what happened she lugged it straight away and there was a few people that we spoke to that were brand new to vaping that were lunging it and apparently a lot of smokers lung hit who knew you might have seen actually when i was demonstrating that when i when i showed you that that i got this out it's a, a k-box 200 and i've been having a look at it and you know like a good presenter does i'll share so here we are at the looking at it table so let's be having a look at what we're going to be having a look at and what we're having a look at is the Kanga K-Box 200. Now, I bought this thing uh, while I was up in Glasgow at the uh, the Glasgow School of Vape 3. And uh, and this is the beastie, the box that comes in. This is the actual thing itself here, uh, which we'll look at in a sec. Um, the box is probably what you would expect of a box. I'm sorry, it's a little bit liquidy because I started using it while I was there. Uh, it tells you that it's 84 millimeters high, 56 millimeters wide, 22 millimeters does temperature control in nickel titanium stainless steel and nichrome canthal nicr yes supports 0 0.05 ohms and above does between 7 and 200 watts smallest size with 200 watts micro usb spring loaded blah 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 all the all of the the kind of stuff that you would expect um the box contains aside from the book of words this strip of i don't know what these are for though they're just black stickers doesn't tell you what to do with them so i'll ignore them because i don't know what to do with them which seems fair to me now as keith managed to point out a little while ago manuals are quite important especially if you don't know how to use something um so let's have a quick look at the manual and see whether it's going to be any good because i think that's quite important let's see so here it is in all its glory um that's the french version let's do the english version which is on the other side now that is actually quite legible uh, it's legible for me with my new singing glasses that i used to read with um, and it actually runs through all of the functions quite well as you may well be able to see sorry if that that light is terrible uh, and I'll, I'll show you the important parts of the menu but yes it is legible with your reading glasses on um, and so on and so on and so forth so let's now have a look at the beast itself uh, and i'll start by whipping it to bits as you do and take the batteries out again as you do I'll try and do it all on camera um one of the th one of the reasons i'm doing this is so that you can see these little hole to get your fingers in right so you can actually get your finger under the battery to pull it out and you will see i've got torches in here uh, 3000 milliamp hours and they are it says 30 amps max 30 amps you see it here no there where my finger is right so let's look at the beastie inside out uh, as you can probably gather there are two battery slots this is a dual battery device and each slot is properly marked up so you can see that you've got a minus here on this end and the plus here so it's fairly obvious which way around these things ought to go 
I just wish they would put the spring bits where the negatives are all the time. That would just make it a little bit more obvious. It seems just a little bit wrong to have the sprung bit for the positive. I, I, I would much rather that was on the negative. That said, dead easy to put the batteries in. So let's do exactly that. Um, negative on the inside one. Negative down on the outside one is the easiest way to put it. And then it lights up. Now, the, the case itself just slides on like so. And then you've got on the back here, that's a vent and there is room so that it would, should it be needed. These holes go right the way through, they're vents, there isn't on the front. Um, there's the bottom, these screws obviously hold in the, uh, the sledge and this is another vent. Um, on the top, you are reminded what it's called look when you're vaping you can have a look at it and it'll tell you what it's called and the centre pin is sprung so that goes up and down so let's have a look at the the menu system and see what that looks like and it's easier if you do it the right way up now you will see at the moment I've got this set for NICR for Nichrome or Canthal and it works in both because I've tried it with both and at the moment you'll see I've got fully charged it's set to 200 watts and obviously it's not reading anything there is zero resistance there um, usual routine fire button here up and down buttons here so cycling through what you want it's just three clicks that goes into sus or pass through in other words three clicks again takes us into wattage mode three clicks we're in nickel mode missed three clicks again we go to titanium mode three clicks again we go to nichrome now you can reverse the display all of those things are there you can lock everything off by pressing all three buttons at once there's all sorts of things you can do let's screw on an atomizer or a tank call it what you like this is a, an Arctic V8 with a V4 coil in it, so it's, it's a quad coil. Um, and you will see when I press the button, or when I switch it back on, bingo, it's picked it up, 0 0.21 ohms. It's still going to fire at 200 watts, um, and I've got it set for 590. I'll give it a quick blast, and then we shall see what we shall see. This is this is confusing me this thing hasn't been working as you would expect it in nichrome mode um, it's currently in nichrome mode and everything's reading as it should but I can't make it fire pressing the button it's just not doing what I want it to do which I find very strange because yesterday uh, and the day before, it's now Tuesday, uh, it's just been doing what you want it to do without any bother at all. Ah, this time it's working. And as you can see, in temperature control mode, it appears to be doing what it's doing, but I kind of want to get close up on this. So excuse me a second while I zoom the camera in and let's see if we can't get really close up to see what's going on. And here we are in close up mode. I'm about to take a drag. And again, see what happens. Now, I've got to say, I'm unsure as to what's going on here. Because earlier, when I was messing about with this, sat elsewhere, as you do, you kind of look at things to see what's going on. And I could see the temperature <coughs> moving up towards that 590 degrees. But what seems to be happening is, just at random, it seems to want to pre... Um, pre-work out the wattage because it's supposed to be pumping 200 watts in 
it seems to want to pre-work out the wattage and then just pump it in up to a certain level so i'm not sure that the nichrome stroke camphal route is working all that well That is to say, in terms of what you would expect from a normal coil. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to put my Cleto on there because the Cleto has a normal nichrome coil and see whether that makes any difference. And I'll do that on camera because that seems the right thing to do. So here we have the Cleto and this is a 0.2 ohm um, but it's not stainless steel it again it's nickel um, so there it is let's press the button and let's see if we can see what's going on and you can see that it's just ah now we're working now it's going so let's see let's press it down and you can see the temperatures we're getting so let's give it a blast it's really weird it's not consistent and in fact <coughs> sorry about that I need to turn that right down uh, and I'll do that on camera so that you can see how it runs so turning it down there we go suddenly it, it goes down in ones and then jumps into tens Let's take it up to 480 and I want to press the button and see whether we get a temperature now you can see look there it goes it takes it a while to start measuring the temperatures so let's so let's give it another blast and I'll hold it so you should might be able to see what's going on anyway that's hot But not too hot again it wants turning down so let's take it down to 400 that's perfectly it, it, it's a lovely vape I'm just not sure what's going on let's uh, bring it back on on camera and press the button right I don't think it's measuring the temperature correctly because I'm pretty used to temperature control by now and I think I need to knock this thing right the way down it seems to be a hundred degrees out of kilter so I'm going to take it down to 300 degrees in the Fahrenheit scale and let's just show you that that is indeed the case there it is 300 degrees and let's see now what happens when I key it. Right. I don't know whether you'd have been able to hear that. Let's give it another another blast. That is acceptable. That's not too hot it's not too heavy um, and I can feel it kicking in it seems to me that in nichrome mode it's very very dependent on the blend of the nichrome which is as you would expect um, it doesn't have or at least I can't find a way of putting in different TCR values um, and that would give you absolute control however it does appear to work after a fashion but you're going to have to use this so that the the temperature that you set is not an absolute temperature it's just a set of numbers and you're going to need to use it in exactly that way it's going to power 200 watts into it no matter what you do um, and it'll vary the wattage that's going in uh, and you can see that on the display when it's doing it um, 
at least you can if you're able to use a camera or look at it separately certainly while you're using it you're not going to be able to see what's going on um, unless you've got much better eyesight than I've got um, so yes it's, it's a guide and it looks as though you need to drop at least 200 off the temperature you're looking for depending on what the makeup is of the coil so it's going to be a case of trial and error and i would strongly suggest that if you're going to get one of these things and i don't mind it at all i've got to say um you need to experiment with whatever your non what we would normally call a non-temperature control coil a canthal or nichrome you are going to have to experiment to find the temperature that works for you so it's not accurate in terms of temperature with a non-traditional, <laughs> this sounds so wrong, a wrong traditional temperature control coil. Um, that said, it's, there's something about this that I quite like, that I didn't expect to quite like. Um, I've run it with stainless steel and it works exactly as you would expect with stainless steel. I've run it with nickel and it runs exactly as you would expect. It's this nichrome temperature control thing that's not doing exactly what I thought it would do. It's kind of not in the same temperature ranges as everything else. And that is definitely down to the makeup of the coil. That said, it is really rather pleasant. Uh, this Cleto is working lovely on it. There's nothing wrong with that. Um, I've got that set at 300. I could possibly turn it up a little it certainly gives you control over the warmth of the vape if you like a hot vape you'll get a hot vape out of it if you like a cooler vape you can do that too but it's not working in the temperature ranges that it says it is um i paid 45 pounds for that i i think the the usual kind of routine is is about 49 quid um there or thereabouts for the 200 watt version the 120 is probably a little bit lower than that experiences with it i picked it up on sunday i bought it um probably 12 o'clock half past 12 something like that and i stayed at the venue until 10 ish there or thereabouts and i went through four sets of batteries not one not two not three but four sets of batteries now the thing is when i put these batteries in before we started this look at the thing they were fully charged i had not used the device at all it has been used only as long as you have seen it let's just press the button and although it's showing full there now if i give it a blast And now it's not doing it again. Just earlier on, it was showing the top bar on the battery indicator was out. And now it's back up to full. That, it's really blitzing through them. Now, I've also noticed that there's differential drain in the two batteries. Um, it's not massive, but it's enough to worry. And they come, it goes to zero when the batteries are around about 3.5 volts the question to ask then is how does this compare to something like the cuboid which takes two batteries and does roughly the same sort of thing although at the moment mine is limited to 150 watts well here's the thing i think 200 watts on two 18650s is asking for trouble it's too much um if you're in temperature control mode i can almost guarantee it's not going to get to 200 watts maybe at the very start but for the most of the time it's going to be running at the kind of um with the kind of coils that, that we normally use it's going to be running at less than 100 watts i've used it in non-temperature control mode at 100 watts on the uh, on the arctic um and it handles that it doesn't get hot that's great in terms of battery usage i know that these torchy batteries are double wrapped um, and I'm using Torchy batteries because I trust the guy. So the Torchy batteries, all of the Torchy batteries, in fact, every battery I've got will fit into there. That's not the same in the Cuboid. The Torchy batteries, for instance, won't fit in the Cuboid 
because they're double wrapped it's a little bit tight so if you've got a great selection of batteries and you've got matched pairs then that might be a better bet i don't know um in terms of size and weight it is smaller it is lighter um it is quite comfortable in the hand because it's it's nicely rounded it's not getting overly hot in use uh even though the <laughs> yeah the tanks do get hot when you start talking in terms of the temperatures that we're using here but you are going to have to be aware that you can't just set a temperature and leave it there you're going to have to set the temperature for each um, coil that you use in canthal nichrome mode because it's it just isn't accurate um it's in this new novel nichrome mode that i'm having i'm gonna call them issues they're not issues if you know what you're doing if you're a brand new beginner what you're doing buying one of these anyway um but yeah it, it's kind of doing what it says on the tin but you've got to move your expectations um as i say i could be tempted to buy another one except for the fact that it eats batteries and i cannot for the life of me see that i'm going to go out with eight batteries in my pockets to get me through a day i'd actually take the cuboid instead that seems to get more out of the batteries than this does um which is a bugger in many ways because it's handy and i would have expected a longer battery life shame but there you go so there you are the kanga k box 200 like the cure it's egg good in parts but i think there's enough bits in there that would annoy you you've got to make your own mind up back to the studio and back to the studio we are i have found out what those black strips are for hey -ha! yes that's what it's all about now during the course of that video one of our viewers Leanna Lawless was posting in that she doesn't know how to change the wattage in temperature control mode on a Rele RX 200. So here's what you do, Lal. Switch it on. Turn it the right way up, David. Then you can, everybody can see, and you'll see it's in temperature control mode. And you will also see down here that I've got it set to 100 watts. And here's how: you give it four clicks, one, two, three, four, and all of a sudden, look. You have your wattage there and then you can pile it up in bits not very quickly but in bits you can pile it up and keep on going and you can pile it down you can do what you want to do with it i'll take it back down to 100 and then when you finish funnying about and you want to set it and you're actually where you want to be boink you press the button and the job is done and as you will see that is now at 101, where is it? 101 watts on my Rele. Four clicks, that's how you do it. Watch, one, two, three, four. And there you have your wattage that you can now change. There you go. It's as easy as that. That's how you do it. And I'll take a drag, just because I can. There was another question as well that was asked um if you've got a married set of batteries in a mod a pair or trips and you want to use them in another mod can you yes you can um i've been moving married pairs between the k-box 200 and uh and the cuboid just because i can uh, obviously not the torches because they won't fit and i'm sorry that looks bloody stupid david don't be so daft ha <laughs> ow why do women wax they must be bloody mad it's illogical <clears throat> yes as long as as long as you keep them married and the same pair you should be fine because they'll be getting or they should be getting the same treatment uh from one to another as you might say that's the way these things work and if it's a married triple set i i have three married that must be illegal well threesome aye well married threesome complicated we'll call it a married pair and the hinger on um ah. so yes you've got i've got triples that are, that are matched sets um and i swap them between my two three realers 
at will and again it's fine and in fact in the rear loads it's a good idea to kind of rotate them around the place so that you put the battery, batteries in at random don't have one always going in slot one two going in all in slot two and three going in slot three but yes you can rotate them around to suit your bit self anything to add Sav? me no you're just going to sit there with your pussy in your hand I anything to add matt um I don't know, but I don't have a cat, so I feel I should say something. But I'm not entirely <laughs> sure what now. I get away with it. I've got a cat. I don't have to say anything. <laughs> <laughs> it's not a cat. It's a, box. a cat. it's a box of chocolates, that thing. It's not a cat. Good Lord above. Um, it's bringing us hurtling up to 10 o'clock, you know. Who knew? Not me. Who Can't knew? Can't see my clock because there's things, screens in the way. Is it indeed? It's 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 craziness. We have gotten to the end of the show, and it's just flown by. It's been absolutely mad. Um, what do I need to say? I'll tell you what I need to say. Press the right buttons, David. It's this is so hard to do. Right. Um, in case I haven't already, and I think I probably have, I want to give a big shout out to everybody that was up at the Glasgow School of Vip Three um, in Glasgow at the Drury Bar and Grill. Uh, on Saturday for the, the, the sheer volume of the welcome. Um, you're guaranteed a good day when you go up there and don't ever believe anything anybody tells you about Scots being tight. They're the most generous people you've come across, not only with buying your drinks, but also with the welcome that you get. It's a fabulous place to go to. I love it up there. And Paddy, as you saw earlier on, he likes us as well. That's nice. Um, shouldn't take it, Mickey. I wouldn't. I wouldn't dare. I wouldn't dare. Um, so the time has come for us to go, and so I say farewell, and and various other things. Uh, thank you so much indeed for tuning in. Um, it's been a great pleasure to share the last hour and a half with you and with Sav. Say hello. Say bye bye, Sav. Bye bye. There you go, Sav. It's lovely to have you back on. It's been good. I've thoroughly, thoroughly enjoyed myself, and I've missed you all. Good. And I can't wait for you to be back. And rumour has it that you might even come down and be in the studio. I may very well make a live people appearance. My goodness me, that'll be stonking. Thank you so much, Sav. And uh, thanks to you as well, Matt. You're welcome. Just that, that's it, is it? I'm oh, sorry. Um, <laughs> you're welcome. <laughs> <laughs> So, yes, thanks to everybody for tuning in. Uh, I hope you've enjoyed the show half as much as we have. In fact, if you have enjoyed the, the show half as much as we have, then we'll have enjoyed it twice as much as you. So until we see you next time, <laughs> from all of us here, vape on, vape hard, and don't let the bastards grind you down. Print that PDF off and get it out everywhere. See you next time. Take care. Bye-bye.